<coughs> Hello, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, please like, subscribe and share. And for my existing subscribers, thanks for your comments, your feedback and stuff like that. Today I wanted to share with you some information I found. It affects me, it could affect many of you, and it's about making tax digital. Um, it applies to landlords, it applies to self-employed, and a lot of you may well have been informed by the HMRC, but what they're saying is that they've held off, how many? They've held off 120,000 letters informing people that they need to make um, put their tax, you know, their tax returns in digitally. And so a lot of people may not know. I didn't know. I came across it by accident. That's the reason why I'm sharing. If it's if it doesn't make sense to you, then or, then this might be useful. But if you already know about it, that's all good. Okay, so basically, it's the HM Revenues and Customs. They've issued more than 100,000 self-employed people with warnings after they failed to meet the new digital tax requirements. And that's why I said, are you one of them? Um, HMRC want to go paperless. Making tax digital involves keeping digital records and using software to complete tax returns. I feel sorry for those people who are not computer literate, honestly. Um, eventually, keeping paper records won't meet requirements of tax legislation. So at some point, you're not going to be able to fill up all those forms that they used to fill up. HMRC saying that making tax digital is an important part of government plans to make it easier for individuals and businesses to get their tax right and keep on top of their affairs. And the reason why they say that is that you can actually upload your receipts and let them know how much money you're making as you go along. You don't have to wait till the end of the year. So it'd be like bookkeeping on the go. So on one, on one hand, I think it could be quite good because apparently they let you know as you go along how much you owe. So that could be good. But it all depends how you need the software, you need to buy it. A lot of them are cloud. I don't like cloud. And so I guess I'm going to have to get used to it. But I don't like cloud. I don't know where it's going. And I don't know. I just don't feel right with cloud. Anyway, a lot of these platforms that they need, the HMRC needs you to use, are cloud based. And I think they cost about $6.99 a month. One of them I called up about was $6.99 a month. And um, I think that's for four years. And that's supposed to give you all the payroll pl um, platforms. And I was telling them, I said, look, I'm a single person. They said, oh, well, you can pay your payroll as a director. And I'm like, what payroll? You know, so to me, it's not straightforward. And I don't know if it's not even worth me getting an agent. So I am going to have to work it out at some point. But I just thought I'd let you know the requirements. OK, since April 2019, which was when the first phase of making tax digital, small business owners have been required to submit their tax returns online using special payroll and income tax software that is compatible with HMRC, which you will find on the gov.uk website. Um, and I, do, I don't know even if you can pay a one-off payment. I think... Um, um simple some 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 organization um says it's going to cost you 70 pound a year which is not much but it's what you have to do to make it work and are you that way inclined and i think another company said it's going to cost you over a thousand for the software and all the things that go with it. Anyway, Telegraph Money has revealed that large numbers of self-employed people have failed to submit theirs. And I don't know if this is because they don't know about it, because like I said, I found it via fluke. HMRC doesn't want to send 120,000 warning letters to business owners, letting them know that they've missed their deadline, which was on the 7th of August 2019, three months ago. I guess it's because it's expensive and time consuming. So they're not going to fine us. 
apparently they're not going to fine us they've given us one year within the implementation period so i guess it was implemented in april 2019 as long as you submit it between 2020 you should be okay um but you don't have to panic at this point it's because at the moment, VAT registered um, are the only ones who have to do this. It's mandatory for them, um, for, you know, sole traders and small businesses. I think their deadline, they, they, it was implemented around October 2019. I am going to read it in a minute. October 2019. But it's not mandatory at this point. You can proceed as normal. Um, it's going to be phased in in 2020, 2021. And at that point, everyone is going to have to do it this way. Everybody. So at least, you, at least what I'm hoping I'm doing is giving you the heads up. I mean, if you want any material, you can always email me at blackbytenews at protonmail.com. The email address is below. And I can send you some bits and pieces that I've gathered that tells you how it works, what you need to do, that kind of stuff and the kind of software that's compatible with HMRC. Um, but um, once you get used to the new platform, it should be better because you submit income and outgoing as you go along. You will know how much you owe before the end of the year. And while you need compatible software, I spoke to Iris. That's the one I, I decided to go with because I wanted one that was just business owner, not one with an agent. A lot of them... Um, they have the software for the business owner and the agent. But Iris, I don't know if that's why it's only £6.50 a month. Um, it's because I'm a business owner, I'm one person, and that was why. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was saying. And they can pay the money that you owe. So HMRC, through this system, will tell you how much you owe, and it automatically pays it. I guess you put some kind of... Um, business card details in it and then it'll pay it or if you want to pay it by direct debit it's it's not it's not it's supposed to be easy but it's not really easy I mean I consider myself pretty intelligent I work in an office I'm clued up with you know um, the basic softwares like excel and stuff like that but when it comes to um, things like payroll and working out NHS apparently works supposed to work it out for you but it does seem a bit challenging and I guess you know once we get used to it it'll probably be easy but it's the thought of getting used to another system and doing having to do something else which you know instead of doing it once a year and giving it to your accountant you'll find yourself I bet you'll be preoccupied with this a lot of the time because it's one of those systems, as soon as you've got something, you're going to think, oh, I might as well load it up before I forget. I reckon it's going to be something like that. Anyway, at the moment, it's been rolled out for those affecting VAT registered business with a taxable turnover above the VAT threshold of 85000 Hopefully, it's not many of us. But it is being phased in for income tax in April 2020 for all VAT registered businesses. And so that's 85,000 and below. Um, they will need to use it and self-employed people, including landlords. Important. If the HMRC has sent you a letter to tell you that you're in the deferred group, start keeping digital records from your first VAT tax return. This is this applies to VAT registered companies, um, and you do that starting on or after the first of October two thousand and nineteen. So we're in November, just the first couple of weeks. So hopefully you've still got the receipts from the first of October because it's only a couple of weeks back. If not, keep digital records from your first VAT return period starting on or after the 1st of April 2019. I would think, though, as a business, if you're VAT registered, you'd probably be keeping receipts anyway. Like a little one person like me, you know, I keep them all in an envelope, but sometimes I forget. And sometimes um, I use, I buy something out of my, like my bills account completely forgetting that it's related to my business 
And then, you know, it's hard to say, OK, I'm going to transfer this over. But I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to, when I do do a purchase from my bills account, I am going to have to transfer over into my business account and make sure it tallies because otherwise, you know, I'm going to end up in a right little pickle. So, um, like I said, if you want a guide to making digi tax digital um, today, email me at blackbrightnews at protonmail.com. The timeline for making tax digital, the government originally wanted to make, to phase it in completely between 2018 and 2021. This is the first I've heard of it. But after consultation with the industry, the first stage only becomes compulsory for VAT registered businesses from April 2019. April 2019, VAT registered business with a taxable turnover above the VAT threshold of 85,000 need to keep digital records and submit digital tax VAT returns using compatible software. Some more complex businesses get a six month um, deferral. Um, that's October 2019 for more complex businesses, which includes trusts, not for profit. Um, companies that are not set up as a company, VAT divisions, VAT groups, those public sector entities, e.g. government departments, NHS trusts, are required to provide additional information on their VAT return. Local authorities, public corporations, traders based overseas, those required to make payments on account and annual accounting scheme users who were deferred, they need to comply with making tax digital. And like I said, October 2019, which was last month, April 2020. And don't worry if, you know, you, you're only finding out now, just in case you are, because at least you're only you know, maybe three, four max, and at least you can get on board with it and start looking into it and find out what you're going to do, as opposed to not knowing about it six months down the line and getting yourself in a tizzy. Okay, April 2020 at the earliest, HMRC will implement making tax digital for income tax and corporation tax. Self-employed people and landlords can currently sign up for the income tax pilot instead of filing self-assessment returns. But I tried it and it wouldn't allow me to do it. It says, oh, it's a trial, go away. Not in this, It's because I ain't got enough money or it's because it's before April 2020. But it did say you can sign up here as implying that I could sign up today because I would have preferred to do the pilot and, you know, get a little feel about what it's going to be like. But they wouldn't allow. So, you know, if you get in on it, if you are able to do the pilot, you just go to www.gov.uk and put in making tax, um, making tax digital in the search bar. And it will give you a link to how you um, sign up for the pilot. And if you're successful, let me know um, in the comments, of course. Um, the pilot lets you keep records digitally and sends them to the income tax updates to the HMRC instead of filing a self-assessment tax return. HMRC says this leads to a more real-time system and lets you see how much income tax you might owe as you go. I think that's quite good. Um, both sole traders and income from one business and landlords who rent out UK property, excluding furnished holiday lettings, can sign up. You'll need to use compatible software, as I mentioned before, to keep records and send an income and expenses summary to HMRC every three months. Uh, the compatible software is Iris, that's the one I called, Xero, QuickBooks and Zoho. I think there's a few more, but they're also they're also on the Gov website. And you should be able to see estimates of how much tax you'll owe. At the end of the accounting year, you'll send a final report and your tax for the year will be calculated. This is the point 
of at which you you'll claim any allowances and release. While the government has estimated costs for your business to be around £70 a year over four years for small businesses implementing Making Tax Digital, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales puts it at 1250 which I bet, I bet that's more realistic, £70. Mind you, the one I said was £6.50, but I bet there's something to draw you in to make you pay more. £6.50 for that service, for that software, seems like very cheap for an accounting software or to do your payroll. So I bet there's other, um, there's other um, elements in it that's going to cost more. I'd be very surprised. That's what I'm saying. It's probably 1,250. I bet the, you know. Anyway, are you ready to make tax digital? Let me know in the comments. And that's all for now. I do hope this is useful. Bye-bye.